What's up, Party Rental people? This is Justin from PartyRentalKnowledge.com. I got Steve Gray from I2K here. Uh, Steve, who are you? What does your company offer? Hey, good, uh, good to be here. My name is Steve Gray, I2K Inflatables. And uh, what we offer is uh, a lot of vinyl. Uh, pretty much any amusement product that you've ever seen we've made or designed or something like that. So uh, our, our, our slogan back in the early 90s was, you name it, we'll inflate it. So that's about <laughs> I it. like that. So how about we'll just get right into it, man. Why don't we just hear your story? There's a, You're pretty famous in the industry. People know who I2K is. If you don't, look them up. Um, why don't you just get, this is going to be a long story, but... It doesn't have to be too long. It's going to be a good story. I want to hear from the mouth, Steve Gray. Uh, so, 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 what do you want to hear? What, how I got into this crazy what, business? What you probably started like I don't know. Most manufacturers started renting inflatables, and then they started making them. So, yeah, Our, mine was uh, mine was a little. It was kind of uh, it, it kind of worked together. Um, and like you said, I, I don't want to sit and bore anybody, but I can give you the, I'll try to cut it down, make the, make the long story short. You want to do that? Or give, or just give us, you, dude, you can give whatever story you want. I want to just hear the truth. And if you want to give the dirty details and make it, make it fun too. But okay. I've heard while like the first, the first one, like, um, uh, I'll even talk for a second too, because I had Steve from Action Rides on here, and he said he was talking about how, like, the first water slide was huge and made out of, like, a back of a van. And then it was, like, um, you know what I mean? And then, it, like, it went, like, to the side of, like, a slide you'd see at the fair. And that was the first one or whatever. And then you came up with the first original one because that dude killed himself or something. So that's what that's what Steve told me. And then you came up with the actual first water slide that was functional that you see today. Yeah, I'm not sure what what that is about the side of the van, but uh, yeah, in the early Dude, he, 90s, he said something uh, about. No, I'm not gonna uh, cut you off. Go ahead. In the in the early 90s, it was around 95. I dreamt up this crazy idea of a slide with a pool, and we brought it to IAP in 1996. And uh, you know, it was, it was like people looked at it like, you know, what the hell is this? I don't get it. You can't put water with inflatables and electricity and stuff. And, you know, we sit there twiddling our thumbs at the show. And I was like, I was like, damn, this was a, a disaster, I guess. And it was a 22 foot. So we didn't start small. We went, we jumped right into it uh, with, all, with both yep. feet. And, uh, you know, I had the pool and we had sound system and the whole deal. And I thought, you know, I thought, man, this thing's cool. But it, it took a couple of years to get off the ground, believe it or not. A lot of new things are like that. You know, early adopters get it. And then we have the uh, backyard water ball pit slide, which I still love. I mean, even for our rentals, it's so easy to move around. They're not as popular because everyone wants the front loader. But if you don't care about that and you want something lightweight, small, you can put more in a pickup truck and they're, uh, they're easier to clean, they're lighter. It's really good for backyard. It's just, it's just not as popular anymore. I don't know. Maybe I'll bring it back. Maybe I'll start doing a, a, a big splash on that to see uh, – see what people think because for backyard parties you don't need an operator you know and even the states that you know they recommend it i mean no one's there babysitting right so i, don't know, uh, you get a, I think you can get a log jammer where i'm at and just run it in somebody's backyard there's some yeah. people that would that's uh, <laughs> huge it's, it, that's you you better have a budget for it because it's, because we charge 12 to 1600 dollars for that all day long so that's one there's New York, man, it's like it's like upstate California, yeah, <laughs> or yeah. mid California, yeah, exactly. by LA. I'm, <laughs> I'm not sure. I am out in California. You're in California, though. Right? Yeah, yeah, we're in LA. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. So then, um, hopefully, we can move out of here soon. Yeah, I met I met you in Vegas. We met each other in Vegas yeah. too. I saw you. Yeah, that's <laughs> throwing. Yeah, over there. I actually met you in Margaritaville first. Oh yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. Tuned up first, right? Exactly. Yeah. No. Um. So back to like inflatables and stuff like that. So talk about your rental business. Like you, you said they kind of went like hand in hand when you started. Yeah. What happened is I, I, I met a guy. Um, I'll give you the. I'll, I'll try to make the long story short. 
uh, my dad, he, he came to me, this was, let's see, I was 21. And he's like, hey, why don't you and your sister figure out, you know, some kind of business to do? And uh, so I went to, I think, Barnes & Noble at the time. This was pre-Amazon. And I picked up the book, 101 Business, Best Businesses to Start. So I'm flipping through it and I see party party planning or event planning, something like that. And I'm like, hmm, okay, I know how to party. This could be fun. So we looked at it and uh, and uh, my, my sister's really, Stacy Gray, you guys probably see her, that's my sister. Uh, she's been with me pretty much since the beginning. So we were doing some event planning. It was pretty lame. I mean, it was, you know, let's be real, it was pretty small potatoes. And uh, we were at a bar, it was my 21st birthday, and uh, this dude came up to me, Tony Wolf. Some of you guys may have heard of him, some of you old timers. He was freaking crazy, like super amped up. And he's all, uh, it was like, hey, dude, uh, what do you do? I was doing shots off my uh, off my girlfriend's stomach at the time. You know, we were having a good old time. And he's like, hey, what do you do? And I'm like, oh, I do event planning. You know, I was like, come on, I don't really do anything. And, uh, and he's like, oh, I got the sumos and the pro wall and bungee run and all this shit. And I'm like, okay, that's cool. I didn't really know what it was, but I kind of remembered David Letterman, you know, and the Velcro wall and I'd seen sumos. Uh, but even my grad night, you know, this is like pre inflatables at grad nights. We didn't even have anything like that. So anyway, him and I got chatting and we, we became friends and it was funny because he didn't even have a, a, a truck at the time, but he had like all the equipment and I had a brand new dually. So I was, he was like, let's load up. And we would do events from LA all the way up to San Francisco doing churches, schools. Uh, this is back when, you know, uh, uh, nightclubs and bars, we'd be doing those, you know, like surf machines and obstacle courses. And dude, we had such a blast. I mean, back in the day, we had so much fun. And, um, and then we had uh, we had a few games on the boardwalk in Venice Beach, so a lot of people walked that beach. We had like a it was like I think it was called a Euro, not a Euro bungee, uh, some kind of bungee trampoline. I forget. We had a Euro jump, jump. They call them too. They call them Euro jumps. They call it an acro flight. It was some dude in uh, Utah, I think, that invented it. It's pretty tall too. It was like it was like twenty five feet tall. So we had that and a boxing ring and a gyro and it was cool, man. It was like me and my cousin Anthony and and uh, and Tony and we would just charge people cash and then we'd spend all of our profits at the bar, you know, down the road there and we just had a good old time watching the sun go down at the beach every day. So that's pretty much where we kind of where it started, you know, doing like rentals and helping him. And then uh, he's like, "Hey, dude, why don't we manufacture this stuff?" And I'm like, "Dude, I don't know nothing about." Me. Manufacturing. I don't know what you're talking about. So uh, we went and met uh, Shane from uh, Jungle Jump. He was the most of you probably. I don't know if any of you remember the old Jungle Jump out of Hollywood. Uh, we went and talked to him and uh, a couple other people. Steve Pretzkin mentioned Frank Frank Braun. I think his name was Mister Inflatable. Uh, you know, he taught yeah. me. He taught me how to sew. Uh, it, it was crazy because, you know, everything was so new and there was no internet. There was no way to find information. You just had to go talk to people, you know, and yep. that's why it's good. You have, you have this party rental knowledge, you know, let, let the newbies understand and see how it is because, you know, I've never, uh, you know, we had nowhere really things. We had nowhere really to go, uh, back then to get any knowledge, you know, and, I am I love it because like you guys really like bring perspective to, and it also brings, um, this industry closer together because this industry is really awesome. It's really fun. We do parties for a living people. Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, you really can have a lot of fun. You know, it's just, we, a lot of us look at it as work because it's heavy. It's difficult. It's hard. Dealing with customers, you know, the whole deal, but I'll tell you what, when you're younger, it's a lot easier too. So Justin, yep. you're a big guy. It's you know, not too hard. <laughs> not, yeah. you know, now that I'm good. Now that I'm 50, it's a little bit harder to, to move the stuff around. So I guess yeah, some, do that. Some people don't realize too. I'm six foot five. Oh, um, yeah, and I'm uh, 350 pounds. I carry it well. Uh, I will I will chase you down and throw you. So yeah. no, <laughs> but no, okay. seriously. Like I I'm just a big dude. So it, like I move these things down like it's nothing. But even even my like I can go ahead and try and put in stakes and all that. But from a personal standpoint. Um, and I was trained hard and rough, um, like straight up. I did the work of three people you know, by myself and got paid only as one person. And I was taught the company culture was that's the normal thing to do. 
mm-hmm. when I went in, and it was just like whatever. So me, I'm not as aggressive, but I know I'm not. I'm not going to hold your hand forever. So if I can get you right in there and go for it and see what you know, um, I shouldn't be doing state that. And I, I, I'm one man show for the most part, um, with just two people doing the work. And I'll be on the phone all day trying to get all the bookings for the next day, putting in my routing because I didn't because I, I had ERS, but I didn't get everything done and completely set or anything like that. So I was just. You know what I mean? It wasn't pen and paper. I was putting everything in my Google. <laughs> so it was like it was just, it was insane. But I did I ended up doing 10 a day in certain points and other things, even more in my first year because I had the experience to go in and do it. Um yeah. and now like I have so much stuff that I'm just I, I'm selling stuff and I'm trying to buy newer stuff and I'm also fine-tuning the company, just making it legit like it is a legit company, but just making it like a finally run company as fast as I can. Try and get the second cu- truck, second crew, and do it fast so I can scale it. Because if it's not scalable, why why even be in business? So, one hundred percent. What about you? How how does scaling go with you? How does scaling go growing like growing your business? Because you said you know what I mean. You, like you said, you went from uh, b- renting them to manufacture them, so not, but you never gave up uh, renting them. Yeah, yeah, we didn't. Um, you know, my uh, we. We continue doing both. It's like when life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? So um, what happened is we started manufacturing some products like sumo wrestling and uh, boxing ring and some capsules and that sort of thing. And um, and uh, at the time, uh, Tony and I stopped working together, and I knew nobody in the industry, right? So I, I, you know, it was it was really difficult, really challenging in the early years because. There's so few rental companies, you know, and there's no, there's no, uh, you know, Facebook groups to go to. So I had to find uh, uh, people who would buy and figure back in the early nineties, how many, how many rental companies were there? You know, it's like, you could probably name them all on one mangled hand, at least per state. So what we did is we're like, you know, we gotta, we gotta make some kind of money here. So let's start renting them. And I remember I bought a, a mailing list for event planners and I went and I mailed out a, a, a flyer to them. I went and visited some and I immediately, they, they were very receptive and I immediately got connected with picnic planners. So that's how we really got started. And believe it or not, in the early nineties, you know, the prices were really high and they've sustained for 20 something years. It's crazy. I'll give you an example. Like, the going retail rate for for this, I call them the staple items, bungee run, uh, Velcro wall, sumo wrestling, boxing ring. Those were about 700 bucks, at least here in L.A. Uh, obstacle courses and slides were around a thousand. And and then, you know, bounce houses were like 250 and then they, and then they quickly went down to 150 and then 75 and now they're like 55. But uh, anyway, so um, what I did is I was like, I was like, shit, that's still good money. So I went into the event planners at 50% off. So, you know, you guys are doing all the marketing. I'll come in instead of 700, I'll do it for 350. And back in the early nineties, that was still good money. So that's pretty much how we started uh, uh, doing picnics. And then uh, we would uh, start doing mailers. I'm a huge advocate of direct mail. Uh, We would do mailers to churches, schools, and that's uh, pretty much what we did. And then of course, like a lot of companies back in the early days, we did do uh, backyard parties. So we would advertise in GTE and pay 350 to 550 per month for a little ad. And, uh, you know, we did that. And I would say we kind of got out of the backyard stuff uh, probably about 10 years ago. And now, of course, we have to, uh, you know, it, it, it's like now we have to pivot back to backyards. We're going to try to do more high end backyard parties, more themed stuff. But, uh, we want more water slides. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> it's like that's the thing, man. We lo- we love our water slide. Those things are those are hot. I've seen some uh, wild things in the industry. The industry seems like it's um, booming again. Like they're coming out with like newer. I don't think it's ever really stopped. This whole industry, the whole thing is you got to just come up with something new every year. It's the whole gimmick because if you keep renting the same thing, well, you can. Oh, everybody wants a basic bounce house. You know what I mean? That's cool. But now it's everybody really is starting to shy away from basic bounce houses. They're like, well, well, why don't I get the basic bounce house with the water slide coming out the side of it? 
Or why don't I get a giant log jammer with a bounce house underneath it and it's a water slide coming down over it? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. But I think you guys are cool too because I've actually wanted to talk to you about getting uh, a giant um, advertising balloon, a cold air balloon. Yep. Easy. I, I don't want to mention what it's. I don't want to mention what it is on here because people are copy my stuff. So I'll talk to you about that one after. But I'll definitely show you guys it if I get it. There you go. Watching or listening, you can go look at some visual stuff. But yeah, that, that's pretty cool. Talk about some of your cold air balloons. Uh, like the advertising balloons. Yeah. Yeah, we do a lot of those. Um, we've been working with. Uh, different marketing agencies and Fortune 500 for years. And that's a big part of our business. We don't show it much on, uh, you know, mostly in the groups that, that uh, you know, you've heard of on Facebook, you know, it's mostly amusement products. But yeah, we do a lot of promotional, uh, whether it's, uh, uh, actually I'll, I'll post one today, it was a Vizzy can, which is pretty cool, but we do every, all sorts of stuff. Uh, it could be anything from stage uh, concert displays to, Product replicas, you know, a giant beer bottle or a, a I seen the can. I seen the what you call it was sick, dude. Um Stacy posted one, it was just like a booth almost, and it was just like people were standing in them and you're it's like a, well the one was a changing booth. She posted oh, yeah. I, th I thought that was cool, and then she showed me a whole bunch more, which is just like your advertising stuff. Like I saw the one I think was like for sunscreen and like it like the pillars for the top the top or like sunscreen or something like that, or it was ice cream or something. Uh, I yeah. saw a bunch, there's a bunch of cool go check out his website. You know, there's a lot of party. Let's get into something right here. There's a lot of manufacturers that has some pretty crappy websites, dude. From your and you guys have a good one. I just want to get into that. I just want to give you props because you guys are on point on that end. There's a lot of manufacturers and their, their websites are trash. I like yeah. yours. It still needs a lot of work. It, I, I swear I look at different pages every day going, what did I do? Start start this project and never finish it. It's like, oh, I got to clean it up a little bit. So it's it seems like it's always a work in progress. It's every that's what every that's for anybody listening. That's any website you do. I'm like me. I got I I'll talk talk personal right here. Per, like I literally paid for ERS for a year and didn't really do anything. It didn't take one booking on it and didn't because I had freaking fear of like literally I knew the capabilities of a rental company. I knew I could upsell like a monster. I knew I could do this and to do all the, I knew I could put all these products. I knew I can have everything um, listed and all my sheets put out. You can do this with IO. I'm saying ERS because I have, you can use this with IO, BCM, whatever. Um, you can do all this. I knew I can do all these things and I literally just didn't know what to start at. And I got overwhelmed and then boom, out of nowhere, it's freaking suddenly COVID isn't a thing. Everybody's stuck at home and everybody wants to party. So it's like, I'm not going to miss out on the money. Yeah. And then I, and then I got to the point where I was like, okay, YouTube got a little crazy, but now since January, I've focused a lot on my website. Cause I want to, I want to be able to really, dude, I'm the party rental guy. And I got to, I talk about websites and all that stuff. Cause I know about him, but I don't have my website done. So it's like, I'm trying to get it now. It's like, I'm in, on the crunch. Cause I want to show people, I just got a new logo made. I got, uh, bunch of domain someone in my area stole some of my domains uh extensions so, so they you know what i mean they had like just in case part uh tense.com or dot org and all that stuff because i had dot com but it's weird because the day before i actually bought just in case party rentals dot com and then i hear they bought my domain. so i was like okay i guess i'll buy other domain extensions then i got that and i and just in case you're running i got party rental and rental dot com uh but it's a it's a vicious websites are wild, dude. You can get crazy with uh with those. Yeah, it seems like they're never finished. You know, you have to have someone on it constantly. But I urge everybody to get hot because you know if this I mean shit, I've been saying this for ten months now, but I really believe that this summer things are gonna turn around. And um uh you know I'm 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 really hoping and praying that June, July is going to be turning around and people are, you just said it, people are going to want to party, man. So we got to be poised and ready for that. So uh, I, you know. I'm blessed too. Cause I, I have a tent background and that's why I, that's why I like, I do, I'm party right. I'm not the bounce house guy on here. My buddy's the tent guy on YouTube. He doesn't do bounce houses. Um, and you know, me and him talk tent all the time. I went to his, uh, I went to his warehouse and helped do the, 
set up tents the whole day and stuff like that. And he was trying to teach me how to do a clove hitch. I'm like, bro, really? <laughs> like, I'm like, you know, I, mean, I, I learned, I learned a lot from him. He was my Patreon. I did his Patreon and stuff like that too, for a while. I learned a lot about tech because he's in New York too. He's three hours away from me. So I learned New York taxes, New York business stuff, little write-offs that are in New York and stuff like that. That's the information that I needed from him. I didn't need to know how to set up a tent. And then I run stuff by him business-wise and marketing and information-wise uh, from from the office aspect. I know a lot about operations because I operated for years. Um, and that, that's what I like about you guys because you guys have a whole rental company. So you know, hey, well, I want to put some extra stitches over here because this is a stress point where that's, you know what I mean? It seems where a lot of manufacturing is going over China and they don't realize this stuff. In China, they... Use the inflatable once and throw it away. People don't know that here. So that's why you get it for pennies. They're built differently. Yeah. Yeah. I think that was our advantage from day one. It's, uh, you know, knowing what your customer wants and, um, um, and, uh, um, you know, knowing what the uh, knowing what your customer wants and knowing what's cool. Uh, you know, I always looked at it like this: when I would come up with our big, uh, like I call them centerpieces, right? Uh, yeah. Maybe it's maybe it's the wrecking ball, or maybe it's a boot camp or a log jammer. I'd be like, "What's going to look cool?" You know, when the setup is all done, and we got everyone has bounce houses, everyone has you know combos and little stuff, and but what's the big centerpieces that's going to really look cool? And it's going to, you know, it's going to really impress your client and your client's clients. Right. So I'd look at it things that, that way. And how do we get more people through? You know, um, a lot of our interactives are like four people. You know, that's that's one of the things we started doing way back when is get get more um, people, that are, more than kids or people interacting at one time. So. Um, 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 yeah. That's been a big thing recently in the industry, just uh, movement through pieces because these events have been getting larger and larger. So there's going to be have to have more people move through them faster and faster. That's an industry trend. That's actually a good thing, but it poses a problem for people like Steve Gray who makes these things. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. And you learn a lot, like you said, you know, where to, uh, uh, where to, uh, you know, reinforce something or like, uh, uh, I don't know. There's just all sorts where to of put, where to put it. a zipper. Cause that's where the water pools up or where to, you know what I mean? Oh, there should be an extra vent here or something like that. Or I should have an extra vent or zipper on top because this, this weird little monkey doesn't want to deflate or something like that because it doesn't have a zipper up there. Or, yeah. You know well, I mean? Gluing or welding seams, you know, we've been gluing and welding seams for probably 15 years. And again, you know, going out, delivering these things myself, you know, killing myself. I'm like, hell no. I don't want to drop something off that's 350 and come back and it's 700 pounds, you know. So those are the things. It's like it's common sense. And, uh, you know, so a lot of those little benefits and features we we put in just because we're trying to make our, our life easier. Yep. And people wonder why they cost so much because there's a lot of work that goes into them. Yeah, yeah definitely. See, what else? So, um... Well, there's stuff because you got some cool things too. You made the the zero shock, right? Is that what it was called? Yeah, the uh, patented airbag system. Yeah, that thing's sick. Yeah, so, they, get, they, they use that for the um, where you go up in the air and jump off into the pit, right? That uh, what is that called? Extreme jump or something like that. Yeah, yeah, we've done that, and uh, uh, the uh, American Ninja Warrior. So we sell to American Ninja Warrior and almost any TV show that has any sort of airbags, we do that. And um, so we manufacture all those here. And um, yeah, it's a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, and then be, to, to have the ability to take that technology and put it into other games where, you know, if anyone jumps even in a bounce house more than a foot or two feet off the ground and you land on it, you know, it hurts, it'll jiggle your brain loose. But, uh, you know, the fact that we could take the zero shock technology, the crumple tubes and put them in like the leaps and bounds or some note as a big baller or the battle, yep. zone, the battle zone, your favorite. It's actually a great game. It's unfortunate. It weighs 9,000 pounds, but, um, you know, but yeah, it's, it's, 
we'll we'll talk about that. <laughs> it's so funny. Literally the battle zone. So the first company that I worked for that had like major inflatables and event inflatables, besides like seeing them and playing on them in the carnival and knowing how they worked, because I saw them all the time. But like as far as like, hey, you gotta go, you gotta go move that. There was literally this one that just sat in the warehouse and never moved, and it was massive. And I'm just like, what is that? They're like, oh yeah, that went out once. <laughs> we had it took them ten guys. They had to put it in the back of a truck and they had to flop it out, or it went out like twice. They had to flop it out, and what it is is it's literally like jousting, but it's you go up two stairs and then walk on a giant pet like a giant beam over a giant pit. I didn't know that those. I didn't ever even seen it up. That's funny. That's so you. The funny that they um you put. I didn't know you guys had the noodles on that one. That's interesting. But they did have the extreme, the extreme air where you literally you go up the stair, like the zip line, same platform. You go up and then you jump off into that freaking giant pit, like your Batman jumping off a building. That's how I always described it. Yeah, <laughs> like that's that's. It. But you also put um, does that in a bounce house too, and you sell that now, right? Oh yeah, the uh, deluxe module combo. We have a small airbag in that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, that's I fun. saw that. I thought that was. I thought that was cool. Yeah, super cool. <laughs> what um, I'm trying to think as far as uh, your company was there any like what what is your best advice for like new people? Um, best advice: know your market, know your numbers. Um, you know, don't. Don't buy things, don't waste money on things that you aren't sure if they'll work. You know, for example, if you're a new guy, don't go buy in a battle zone. You know? um, uh, and for the, uh, for the ones just doing backyards, I would strongly urge you to get into churches and schools. For those doing churches and schools, don't forget about the backyards or you'll be like me and have, have uh, no business coming in when, with the COVID summer. So, uh, um yeah those are i guess a couple of tidbits no those, those are some of the biggest lessons learned this year so you just they're uh definitely good ones if they didn't hear them in the other videos they just heard you say it so it's that's yeah. the truth man they're, that go get your business yeah you know life you got to be ready to pivot no matter what i mean we had covid we all got screwed or most of us did you know it was pretty effed up for everybody uh yeah. Uh, you know, in, in in life and business, I mean, we've we've pivoted a lot through the years. We were doing inflatables, and then we started making battery powered bumper cars. And then I had an indoor, I had two indoor facilities, one in Newport Beach and one in Utah. I've you know, we've bought the patent for the airbag system. We've you know, we've just you got to morph and do different things. You know, so you got to yep. be flexible. You got to always have your eye on the ball. Always get be looking at new things, new opportunities. You know, otherwise you'll just be stagnant. You're just going to be the same bounce house guy. You know, does anyone want to just be the, you know, the bounce house guy down the street? Hell no. You know, you got to be different. You got to be unique. You got to have different products and, um, and talk to your customers, you know, find out what they want. What are they looking for? Yep. You got I like the wow factor. That's why I try to be, I'm trying, I already try to differentiate because I already got a bunch of inflatables. Now I'm trying to differentiate for myself from my competition. Uh, which which really isn't hard to do. People do their own thing, and you just do your thing. So it's, it's, there's so many different options and angles of this party rental stuff. That's what I like about it, too. Like um, I talk about tents on here, yard cards, all kinds of things. Um, there's so many different angles of attack, and it can all be versatile. So they go hand in hand. But, hey, Steve, check out um, I2K. Go on our website. I'm going to put a link in the description for uh, that. Also, like and subscribe if you like the video. Hope everybody had a great day. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Good Thank time. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Peace.